Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So alhamdulillah uh, we gonna start uh, learn on chapter 5 about you know, mobile uh, apps development. Right. So let's go to the slide. So before we go to the slide, uh, Okay, we go to our syllabus back uh, first. Okay, ICT 602, Mobile Technology and Development. Chapter 5, we're going to learn on mobile application development. So, today we're going to see what inside uh, 5.1, Mobile Application Development. Right, are you ready? Okay, for the first topic of chapter 5, mobile application development. So, uh, okay, the last chapter we learned about mobile browsing experience, uh, direct versus cloud-based browser, direct versus proxy browser, designing interaction in mobile web, handling uh, web device proliferation and designing for context. So today on mobile application development, we're going to go to subtopic app development stages, uh, SDK platform and factor deciding the best mobile platform. Right. On the app development stage, so there are four basic app development stages. The first one is designing, selecting the framework and platform, targeting group of devices and support platform, and last is uh, testing on a matter. Okay, first designing, second selecting the framework and platform, third targeting group of devices and support platform, and fourth and last testing on a monitor. So uh, SDK platform. As we learned in previous topic, there are three major approach in developing mobile application. Okay, sama ada kita guna mobile web application atau kita nak develop native application or we can uh, go to a hybrid application. Ha, Dua-dua boleh kan? So, the difference between native and web-based application. So, a native web, a native app is an app, app application developed essentially for one particular mobile device and is installed directly onto the device itself. Users of native app usually download them via app stores online or the app marketplace. Uh, marketplace. Okay, contoh marketplace. Dah, kalau Apple kita pakai apa? App store kan? So kalau kita, app, kita pakai, kita nak develop dalam Nak letak dalam App Store, kita kena download dalam apa? Guna-guna Xcode kan? Swift. Okay. Kalau Android? So Android, kita ada Play Store kan? Play Store, kita pakai Android. Kotlin lah kan? Kotlin is a native app. Alright. So, uh, tu adalah contoh native apps. And then, a web app lah. Web app ni, kita boleh on open the app using browser lah. Okay, guna Chrome ataupun uh, phone punya web browser dia ada kan. So, a web app on the other hand are basically internet enable apps that are accessible via the mobile devices web browser. So, they need do not, they need not to be downloaded onto the user's mobile device in order to be accessed. Okay, walaupun tak boleh download kadang-kadang dia ada bagi uh, shortcut. Uh, itu shortcut saja kan. Uh, so, dia shortcut uh, web app ni. Kita boleh buat shortcut. Uh, letak macam dengan uh, native app juga. Kadang-kadang ada kan. Dia, so, kita tekan. So, dia akan sebenarnya dia buka browser je lah. Kan? So, uh, yang kita sebut tadi. Mention tadi dua benda. iOS dengan Android. Okay, Apple iOS, App Store, uh, Android, Play Store. 
Rupanya Windows pun ada Windows. Windows Store. Kan? Windows Store ke? Kalau Windows. Saya pakai Windows ni. Uh, Windows. Apa nama dia? Dulu ada nama market, market. Microsoft Store. Bukan Windows Store. Microsoft Store. Kan? Uh, yang ni mungkin. Uh, ya sesuai kan? Nah, saya tak pakai laptop ni, saya pakai tablet. Tablet Microsoft lah kan. Surface. So, dia dua dalam satu lah. Tablet dengan laptop pun boleh jadi kan. Nah, dia boleh jadi laptop. So, sekarang saya dalam mood laptop lah. So, saya boleh install benda-benda ni sama kan. Macam dengan telefon lah. Right. Contoh yang dah saya install apa? Piano kan? Yang piano saya ambil di sini. So, saya dah install piano. Dan. Hmm. Piano. Ini yang ini yang ini yang. Ini contoh contoh app lah kan contoh app. Tak lemin dia lag dia lag. Tertekan tak tak ini. Delek, delek. Contoh, uh, market share lah, okay, so mobile platform, so mobile uh, sama ada tablet ataupun phone lah, kan. Alright, so kita ada Microsoft Store, uh, ya yeah, App Store, Play, Play Store, Microsoft Store, dan yang tu ada tak? Ada banyak lagi kan yang China punya version tu, siapa yang pakai Oppo, Oh no, mungkin dia ada store yang lain kan. Apa lagi? Huawei kan? Huawei. Dan juga ada yang third party punya. Uh, market share kan. Excuse me, nak bersih pula kan. Alright. <coughs> so, here ada uh, um, pie chart untuk uh, top smartphone OS in the US tahun 2014. Okay, masa tu dah ada Blackberry lagi kan. And then Symbian. Apple dengan Android uh, paling banyak lah kan. Alright. Apple dengan Android paling banyak.
Okay, Symbian, Blackberry, Microsoft. Microsoft ada juga. Microsoft, Blackberry, Symbian. Okay. Symbian masih ada kan. 2014 sekarang saya rasa dah tak ada lah. Kan. Apple, Android, Microsoft. Okay. Ni on 2014 lah. Okay. Uh, several popular native SDK platform. So dia ada Android, iOS. Microsoft Windows Mobile and Blackberry. Masa tu lah. Okay, for the Android. Uh, ni, ni tajuk popular native SDK platform kan. Android one of the most popular mobile platform because dia source open source lah. Right? So available under open source and property license. The, the application programmer interface, dia punya API dia is available as Java classes. So the platform is supported under popular desktop operating system Microsoft Windows, Mac OS 5 and OS 5 OS 10, OS X and Linux. Okay, X ah dengan 10 PM X and and Linux and widest OS support. Okay, the other drawback there suffers from device fragmentation. So too many devices with vastly different hardware specification. And capabilities, this made it harder to develop application that support all Android device. Okay. Jap, jap. Dah rambut pula masuk muka. Masuk dalam mulut. Rambut ke bulu mata ke? So disadvantage of Android ada uh, suffers from device fragmentation. So too many device with vastly different hardware specification and capabilities kan. Uh, ada banyak yang buat handphone nak pakai Android kan. Tapi uh, dia ada different version lah kan. Uh, dia punya hardware kan. So maksudnya developer nak maintain tu. App kita kadang-kadang tak support dekat uh, handphone satu lagi kan. Uh, kita dapat cantik lah dekat handphone yang yang ini. Kerana uh, model model blind pun kerana nama hardware dia tak support kan. Alright, so second one is uh, release proliferation may have to support application running on different version of Android at the same time. Kan? Uh, example dia may have to consider supporting Android 5.1. Uh, why not alienating uh, Android 2.3? Uh, dia boleh support 5.1 je, 2.3 tak boleh. Nama-nama uh, Nama untuk uh, Android ni daripada ABC kan. Uh, ABC kalau 2.3 ni G kan. G, L kemudian lollipop. Dia ada kan. Sekarang dah apa dah? Z dah. So untuk iOS pula one of the most popular mobile platform. The application programmer's uh, interface ataupun API dia is available as Objective C classes. Okay, the platform is supported across OS 10, 10 point something operating system. So has well-defined device specification does not suffer from device fragmentation. Tak ada masalah macam Android tadi lah. And features and functionality are well standardized. But dia, dia, dia sendiri yang jaga kan. Dia sendiri ikut dia punya spec. Hardware semua semua dia, dia sendiri yang buat. Uh, tapi dia punya drawback dia. Request OS X platform lah. Any mobile application develop. Development require the latest release of OS X. Operating system running on Apple certified uh, device. iMac, MacBook and etc. The second one is a cost lah, higher entry level cost. Publishing RS mobile application is significantly costly compared to other platform. Uh, that's why kadang-kadang uh, kena beli kan dekat OS, bukan kena beli. Payah nak jumpa free kan. Uh. Okay, RS apps are the most expensive to develop. Average cost to develop are an app for 95% of app excluding those with highest development time. Okay. So, uh, iOS paling tinggi ya. Kan, uh, nak develop dia mahal. Cost dia mahal lah. Right. Okay. 
Okay, so this is app, Apple app review process. Nak upload benda tu dekat uh, App Store, dia kena, uh, kena review dulu. Okay, so waiting upload, uh, kita dah upload and then ada receive daripada sana, dia akan waiting for review. Dia tidak terus review, dia akan tunggu dulu seminggu dua, kalau dia dah review, kadang-kadang kena reject. And then, dia akan pending untuk dia release baru dia akan ready for sale. Dan uh, tidak terus upload terus pakai. So, saya rasa uh, dekat Android pun dia dah dia dah tiru, bukan tiru lah. Dia ada make step macam ni juga. So, tak simply mudah macam dulu lah. Masuk dalam App Store kan. Dalam Play Store, sorry. Kalau Android dalam Play Store pun dia lebih kurang macam App Store sekarang. Dan dia kena bayar kan. App Store sendiri tu pun dah kena bayar kan dia punya untuk developer kan. Ha, ni contoh. Uh, contoh nak hantar satu app lah nama ni People Time Watch kan. Okay. So kita tengok dua-dua kan. Uh, developer gets an Apple ID a distribution certificate and provisioning, provisioning uh, profile and then developer uh, archive so validates and submit an app the third step uh, apple review the app developer awaits approval through itunes connect uh, kan? and developer directly release the app to user okay, untuk android uh, developer choose between the free or paid model then gets a checkout account if he choose Later and then they will directly release the app to user. Okay, ni waktu zaman, uh, waktu 2014 kan. Uh, saya rasa sekarang uh, Android pun dah review kan untuk Play Store. Alright. So, uh, kalau dulu, so Android akan, uh, Google akan remove non-compliant apps from its store. Sekarang dah ada review lah. Untuk Microsoft, uh, based on .NET Compact Framework, API class under available under C Sharp and Visual Basic .NET. Okay, current Windows Mobile SDK is supported under computers running Microsoft Windows 8.1, Professional Edition and above. Kalian dah lebih dah kan? Okay, so drawback dia sangat banyak lah. Ada small market share, only supported Microsoft Windows 8.1, Professional Edition or later, suffer from device. Uh, proliferation auto not as a server as android tapi dia ada juga okay, advanced IDE okay, integrated developer environment for development windows mobile application is costly compared to other platform uh, dia pun mahal juga kan next kita ada blackberry so dia adalah small market share SDK supported under microsoft windows or SX and linux operating system Classes uh, available in C Sharp, uh, C++, okay, Blackberry pakai C++, support less from device, uh, fragmentation sebab dia, dia sendiri yang keluar, Blackberry kan. Okay, so dia sangatlah small market share, high learning curve dia punya uh, disadvantage. Eh. Next, we go to factors in deciding the best mobile platform. Alright. Better for choosing the most suitable uh, mobile device platform. Uh, first one, market share. And then second one, target users or population. The third one, platform capability and availability. Uh, next, uh, platform features. Uh, of course, cost. Adalah uh, salah satu faktor. Penting lah, okay. And then learning, learning curve. Lastly is learning curve. So market share usually ranks high on the list of choosing a mobile platform deciding factor. Market share reflect the potential of application availability on the general population. While developing uh, application on mobile platform that has low market share is generally not a bad idea. So but it represents low application availability to the general public. Application will be more visible on devices with more market share. So untuk target users of population, second most Important factor to consider is target users. Why market share can be used as potential application visibility indicator target users instead determine who will use 
your application sebenarnya. Okay, for example, teachers will might prefer a different set of application than a business woman. Those the application, uh, the application developer must consider the target users wisely. So target users may prefer different mobile platform. A business woman, for example, would be potentially attract to use BlackBerry instead of other mobile platforms. Sekarang saya rasa uh, bukan BlackBerry lagi lah. Uh, iPhone kan? Okay, and then kita ada platform compatibility, uh, compatibility and availability. So, platform compatibility and availability, developers must also consider platform compatibility and availability. So, compatibility dia apa? Whether a mobile platform is supported under different desktop operating system and then whether the mobile platform supports previous ataupun later version of its own platform. Okay, sama ada upwards ataupun downward compatibility. So, ni ada koran. Oh, sabak, sabak. Ada kelas. Uh, untuk availability, that means if the platform is readily available or can interpret with other operating system or platform. Untuk platform features pula, so determine the generally available features on a certain platform. Some platform offers a wide range of sensors of all features at the cost device fragmentation, while other platform are more conservative with offering varied uh, device features to ensure device compatibility and to reduce device proliferation. For example, uh, some platform offers NFC and fingerprint sensor as optional features. Uh, sekarang ni banyak dah kan yang pakai fingerprint kan. So why does it drop the features altogether to encourage uh, platform standards and avoid device fragmentation? So those uh, developer who are interested in NFC based application may have to select the platform which offer NFC features. Kan, NFC ni apa? Dia wireless lah, wireless. Uh, connection macam uh, dia macam smart tech tapi smart tech pakai uh, dia macam radio juga uh, apa yang kita pakai macam bluetooth uh, apa satu lagi RFID kan dia macam RFID juga uh, kalau dekat uh, supermarket kan ada NFC kan Ah macam ni uh, card yang kita touch nak masuk uh, lab tu kan smart card kan okey smart card tu kan uh, smart card bukan smart tag sorry touch and go salah sebut kan smart tag uh, pakai dekat uh, smart tag pakai apa infrared uh, okey tapi dia dalam tu dalam tu ada Tashengo punya card kan? Tashengo card. So cost, okay, some platform may have slightly high cost to develop or deploy application. There are several costs to consider. Okay, platform SDK license, autonomous uh, available for free, developer, development environment. Some platform requires specialized operating system or special OS version. And then kita ada third party libraries. Some platform relies heavily on third party libraries. And application distribution cost. Uh, most official mobile distribution channel require payment to publish application. Tama ada Google Play Store, iTunes App Store, Microsoft App Market. Nah, dia minta duit lah. Lastly, kita ada learning curve. Some platform have higher or lower learning curve. Okay, so this factor lah. Although this is considered as the least important deciding uh, factor, it may have considerable weight on new developers. So learning curve is affected by platform familiarities and then programming language proficiency and development paradigm and IDE. Okay, choosing a platform with higher learning curve may affect the development time developer familiarize uh, himself with the particular platform. All right, untuk cross platform tools, uh, the hardest cross platform tool. Eh? Ataupun kita panggil hybrid macam Flutter kita tu dah ke cross platform semua boleh kan. App, mobile app boleh. Uh, mobile app boleh. Android boleh. Uh, Windows pun boleh. Apa lagi? 
Dia ada kan boleh untuk Windows pun boleh dia boleh buat uh, EXE file kan. Sekarang EXE pun dah ada apa tu? Uh, yang Windows pun nak buat macam RS dengan Android buat tu kan. Sebab saya dah download yang Microsoft Teams tu saya rasa uh, pelik lah kan. Nak cari dekat program file tak jumpa uh, dalam Windows sekarang kan. Kalau kita download yang baru punya Microsoft Team, yang klasik punya, new klasik Microsoft Team, nak cari benda tu dekat program file, dah tak ada, tak jumpa. Right. Ataupun contoh yang kedua, Messenger. Okay. Yang buruk tu, yang Messenger untuk uh, desktop. Uh, Messenger ni FB lah, Facebook punya Messenger. You try uh, download FB untuk desktop, uh, you carilah dalam program file, tak jumpa kan. Sebelum ni semua simpan kat situ kan. Alright. <coughs> a hybrid mobile app. So a hybrid app is a combination of mobile web and down downloadable native app. So that runs all or some of its user interface in an embedded browser component. So it's almost indistinguishable from a native one. So down downloaded from app store, store on the device. Launch just like any other app. So cross-platform tool allows developer to write application in one code base and deploy them across multiple platforms. Okay, developing for multiple platform has the advantage of the reaching wider audience pool. So cross-platform tool can shorten development time for multiple platform development. So however, cross-platform tool may result in lower user experience if the portal application is not modified to match a particular platform presentation. Okay, so benefit dia, satu kod base lah. Nah, satu kod base. Uh, okay, right once, run anywhere. Kan, satu kod base. Cross platform technology, let the developers to write code once, only once and use it for all major mobile platform. Semua boleh. And then, ada plugin. Cross use a, use of plugin. Cross platform mobile development technology allow the developer to use plugin for developing uh, platform independent mobile apps. Easy to use. Okay, cross platform mobile app development tools are easy to use and there is no need to be skilled in highly complicated object oriented technology like C plus plus and Java. Saya rasa yang ni bukan flutter lah ni. Uh, flutter tak easy sangat kan? Cost and time effective, okay. Cross platform technologies allow the developers to develop complicated mobile app easily. It reduces the operational development time and cost for mobile application. So handy development services, cross platform mobile development is an easy process that does not require complicated technical skills, and that is why is it easy to handle it. Macam dengan I uh, build mobile kan, kan? Alright, so native app, push, uh, ni, okay, web app dengan native app, apa pasal dia. Okay, so kita ada web app, kita ada power of HTML5. So app development is complicated process and for native mobile app development like need a proficiency in object oriented technologies like C++ and Java web technology like HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript allows us to develop platform uh, independent mobile apps easily without knowing complicated core technologies. So drawback of cross-platform mobile development, decision for updates, uh, problem like itu. Cross-platform tools are not seen with the current mobile development market and that is why they fail when the update, when any update comes in the market for iOS and Android or Android development. Restrictive tools, tak semua benda tools boleh pakai. Eh? Cause platform platform not allow the external tools and restricts the developer to develop app as they want. Slower code, so that's slower. Eh? Cause platform tak just give a longer code render time for developing apps for multiple platform that makes this process very slow. In effective codes, the overall performance of the re develop app through cross platform tak just shows in effectiveness. Okay. Uh. So, dia tak masuk sini, flutter tak ada kan? Sebab yang lain tak rasa macam senang. Okay, cross-platform tools. Notable cross-platform tools ada Ionic, uh, okay, PhoneGap, Sencha, 
uh, Touch Accelerator Adobe Air. Aha, boleh pakai Adobe Air. Intel SDK kan. Okay, contoh yang paling uh, ramai orang pakai Ionic lah. So, one of the most promising HTML5 mobile application frameworks. So, provides many UI components to help the publish and interactive apps use the JavaScript and BBM framework and GraalJS to power apps. And then based on simple technologies, CSS3, HTML and JavaScript sebenarnya. Right, access to mobile features and sensor. Boleh ada mobile features atau sensor. Kan. Eh, contoh, nak develop dalam Ionic kan. Komponen ada CMD, Text Editor, Browser, Ionic Lab, Android SDK 2. So, advantages of open source, use of well-known web technologies which you probably will employ if you need to develop a server side of the system, a good ability of plugin. So, disadvantage they adalah very fragmented and they are very old version out their people still use. So performance are not the best, especially with all the version of Android. Don't even dare using it for heavily graphic stuff like 3D or video games. Uh -huh. Phone gap pula, like, most famous platform, especially among the beginners. Okay, so they want pakai phone gap. Based on simple technologies, CSS3, HTML and JavaScript provides free access to as hardware components through plugin architecture. Ada GPS tracker, accelerometer and device camera. So application are hybrid. So kita tengok advantage dia doesn't require the knowledge of dense programming language. Oh, tak payah pun ni. Drop, drag and drop je kan. Develop apps easily without any major investment. Installation of phone app is similar oh, to the installation of native app. So disadvantages, developer himself has to write the plugin if it not available. Plugin tak ada kan. Performance will be affected if the developer use many graphics. Sencah touch, okay. HTML5 based cross platform framework provides uh, fully functional APIs and offer a component based approach for building mobile application. This framework makes application performance faster and more responsive while creating unparalleled uh, user experience. So, advantage delivers a rich experience as expected by the user. It provides a rich set of recommendation and screencasts which make you more productive. So, it Ensure pixel perfection with its advanced layout engine. Oh, hebat juga. Ah. Okay, disadvantage chance of vendor getting locked in as in a hive as it is not an open source. Oh, susah kena bayar lah kan. It work only on JavaScript which may create issues while creating mobile apps. Accelerator. Kan. Uh. Used for the development of native and hybrid mobile application while using a single code base. Okay, enable developers to mobilize all type of data source while enabling faster application testing due to its uh, to its live prototyping and fully optimized code. So advantages develop an application in flexible way with it rapid prototyping, use JavaScript, HTML, and CSS for creating the app. Use standard user interface element like table, button, and etc. Store the data locally. Disadvantages as it is restricted for certain components of mobile OS. It offers limited access to device resources like camera. Adobe Air. So Adobe Integrated Runtime, also known as Adobe Air, is a cross-platform runtime system. Okay, developed by Adobe System. Adobe ke Adobe? You also put Adobe ke Adobe? Adop. Jangan sebut Arabi itu yang eh nak kok kok nah, nah tu Arabi salah lain. Okay. Adobe system Adop Adop pun Adop lah kan. Nah. System for building this internet application can be published as native phone application on iOS and Android. Okay programming language dia pakai action script HTML CSS dengan JavaScript. Application with in-app billing, push notification and browser-based game are bit quick commonly using this platform. Ha, banyak game pakai ni kan. Azure a rich user experience, create apps with rich media content which require Flash. Masih pakai Flash ke? Easy to install, play high quality HD videos with industry standard codecs. So drawback there, disadvantage there, 
Database access is limited uh, to SQLite or web services. The developer needs to have a good knowledge on complex language to use Adobe Air. Intel SDK, last huh? a new cross-platform option. The Amon kit created by Intel to create native app for mobile phone and tablet uh, using web uh, technology like HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, first launched in October 2013, because it of development tools to help uh, the open code debug, test, and build mobile web apps and hybrid HTML5 apps to uh, for multiple target platform. Uh, they can become to Windows saja, OS X and Linux, both 32 bit and 64 bit. So they are sebenarnya emulated, party plug in support, device testing via Intel app, preview, mobile app, and the Android juga. Okay, you are layout with the. Again. Macam senang. Right, so yang tak ada tadi, Flutter tak ada. Flutter ni saya rasa dia special sikit. Nak kata native, dia cross platform. Native yang cross platform. Kan, dia tak boleh kata dia hybrid sangat sebab Uh, sekarang ni dia cross platform sebab dia kena dia boleh juga buat untuk uh, uh, sekarang ni masih lagi boleh untuk uh, iOS lah kan ke depan kita tak tahu kan sebab dia siapa punya kan dia macam Google punya kan bila Google punya selalu untuk Android kan uh, sampai satu tahap mungkin dah tak dibenarkan untuk iOS mana kita tahu kan Sebab dia bukan buat uh, atas Android Java yang biasa dekat Kotlin tu. Ha? So dia, uh, coding dia, dia tak pakai Java, betul? Bahasa dia pakai apa? Dia ada bahasa di sini ataupun dia pakai Dart kan, language Dart. Dia tak pakai Java kan. And then macam mana dia boleh duduk dekat dua-dua tu, dekat... Uh, Windows boleh dekat Android, boleh dekat OS boleh. Dia compile tu kepada low level machine uh, language kan. Kan. Selalu so, kita buat C++ ni high level language kan. So dia kepada assembly language tu. Dia terus jadi binary terus. Ha, dia binary dia bercakap dengan binary. Terus bercakap dengan machine terus lah. Kan? Terus bercakap dengan machine dengan dengan machine pula. Dengan hardware terus kan. Okay. So semua program dia tu telah diprogram untuk cakap dengan hardware terus. So so dia special sikit kan. Nah, dia duduk di antara hybrid tak hybrid. Native tak native. Tapi dia memang cross platform lah. Alright. So untuk itu last uh, word. Kau ada nak tanya soalan? Any question? 5.1. Chapter 5.1. Yes, okay, kalau tak ada, kita tutup dengan tasbih kiparah dan surah tu wa'ah subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu ala ilaha ila anta astagfirullahaladzim wa alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh insana bikus illa alladhina amanu wa amna sekolah tasbih al-haq wa tawasuh bisak surah kalau alaikum assalamualaikum sama, jangan lupa kera'ah thank you sir sama Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Summer. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Summer. Summer.